Hello Winning fans, the new releases continue to roll on with another must-play top 5, although we do also have one long and development bigger title, and a number of neat demos in this edition of Indie Gaming this week. Let's begin with Scarlet Hood and the Wicked Wood, an adventure game with a little bit of a suggestive art style, where you play as a witch who must lead her munchkin troop out of the Wicked Wood. It's a strange mishmash of ideas from fables like Little Red Riding Hood, The Wizard of Oz and more, but does look to be polished and well made. This is from developer Despresso Games, who you might know from the horror series The Coma and the darkest dungeon like Vembri's Cold Soul, so certainly a good pedigree right there. The next title may be a little niche, but NGU Industries is the sequel to the cult classic idol game NGU Idol, only this does the very smart thing that I mentioned before in including a factory building element which makes it even more compelling. Yes. Idol games are rather niche, but developer 4G is one of the best at it, and with this game being free to play, why not give it a go? Hey you! Did you just start your internship? Welcome intern! And we're destroyed by your co-workers! Make me coffee. Copy these papers! Bad hair day alert! Your supervisor probably just stole your lunch! Thanks, Intern! And the problem is, you are too shy to say something! I don't see coffee. But don't worry, all you need is just one word! It's the word NO! A comedic adventure this week is Say No More, where you simply have to say no to hilarious effects. It seems pretty funny due to the voice acting, the reactions of the character when the gigantic no flies in their face and so on, Looking light-hearted and fun, but I'm not sure how much depth there is here. No, no, no. No. Hey, no. Oh, yes. What is this madness? If you're into colony sims, listen up. First Feudal is one such title that is obviously set in medieval times, having you building up and expanding from a small village into a huge castle gathering and farming resources needed to survive while defending yourself against external threats. I always love the gameplay loop of titles like this, where the emergent stories and random events are the main draw, with the medieval setting being pretty classic but a nice alternative to the sci-fi of something like Rimworld. This launches in 1.0 after more than 3 years in early access, so if you have not gotten this, this week's the best time to jump in. It's hammer time! Those foolish Templars think their Emperor is some sort of god. I hope you're not going to eat that. If you're into roguelites, Viking Vengeance might be of interest, where you play as a Viking warrior calling upon the power of the Norse gods to help his people and to stop Ragnarok. Human. They will kneel before Loki. I've got your back. It's Thursday! My hammer is ready. Not trying to be mean, but the voice acting in this trailer isn't exactly the best, so it does lack some polish, with a number of generic looking low poly assets, but as a roguelite fan, I do think that there's something here. The interface and abilities do look more akin to a Diablo-like isometric action RPG, so I'm not sure where the roguelite elements come in, but taken as a whole, this might turn out to be a hidden gem. 
I wish I could do more to help you, but I spent most of my powers to protect my son. Your enemies were destined to perish. Nobody can stop you. A legend is born. Shatter Mountain. It's always wise to talk to as many people as possible. Use the power of the runes wisely. Your hard work has impressed the gods. One of the reasons why I love video games is that we somehow continue to get new additions to classic franchises and IPs years after the fact, and such is the case with Oddworld Soulstorm, where the series dates back to 1997, so 24 years after the first game. While I have no particular nostalgia for the Odd World series, it's interesting to see them trying to make a new one for an audience in 2021, where the cinematic puzzle platformer might have some new tricks up its sleeve, so we'll have to see on this. Smaller Games of the Week begins with Astro Aqua Kitty, which did actually make me do a double take since this is a brand new game, not to be confused with Aqua Kitty Milk Mine Defender, although both games are from the same developer. In contrast to the side-scrolling Defender-like gameplay of the earlier title, this game has more of an exploration and RPG element to it, looking pretty awesome and of interest, although it does appear to be a Switch exclusive at the moment. Each human being faces death sooner or later. But now, death is only the beginning of your journey. Let professionals take care of your future. The Global Funeral Agency is glad to present Universal Coffins for Space Funerals. Our answer is the <laughs> I covered the space survival title Breath Age in February when it launched out of Early Access, and this awesome game, dubbed Subnautica in Space, gets console ports this week. If you're into space RPGs, Colony Ship, a post-Earth role-playing game might be of interest, where you do have turn-based tactics combat and a cool sci-fi aesthetic, and does look like a pretty hardcore one of these. I covered the one-bit platformer Dojo Run in November last year, but it did get delayed and should be releasing this week.
A funny little RPG is Don't Give Up, A Cynical Tale, telling the story of a game developer who is suffering from some sort of mental illness and despite the rather grim subject matter, is a neat and innovative title which gets a Switch version this week. Want to explore the mysteries of the Lost Temple? But there are many dangers hiding. Gather your team of adventurers. Choose your heroes from eight classes. If you are a fan of retro first-person party-based dungeon crawlers like The Legend of Grimrock, then Elmarion The Lost Temple might be of interest, although interestingly, combat does appear to be in real time. Spiders ghosts and other dangerous creatures. In the dungeons, you will find many mysteries and secret places. In which you can find valuable things. Get each hero in great armor, and then you will not be afraid of the most dangerous enemies. Explore all dungeons and find an ancient, powerful artifact. Yes? Would you mind coming in here for a second? No, kill these. Okay. Do you want to murder them with me? <laughs> Alright, listen! <laughs> so you need to put the fire out. Yeah. With the success of Among Us, there will inevitably be other games in the space, with First Class Trouble being one such entry that should be fun with friends. She's been trying to kill us the whole time. It's not me! It's not me! I love it! <laughs> yes! <laughs> yeah! Gravita is a chill-looking puzzle game about manipulating gravity, getting on the board for its aesthetic alone. find myself in a strange world. It feels like a dream. If you're in the mood for something a little darker, In My Shadow is an interesting looking puzzle platformer about a girl and her struggles with the past, manifesting in some puzzle platforming action using light and shadow, which, while certainly not a new mechanic, does look to have some clever tweaks on the idea. Running and running. But I don't know where. Will this ever end? Or am I lost forever? One of the most interesting action platformers in terms of design is Luck Slinger, where luck is measurable, collectible, and usable wherever you please, all in the context of a western-themed side-scroller which gets console ports this week.
I've been keeping up with developer Grinolaw Studio since they put out Beasts Battle in 2016, but the prologue demo of their next title, Magician's Legacy, is of interest, since it does look very much like Heroes of Might and Magic, which, if you watch my 5 year anniversary special, will know that as a series near and dear to my heart. A very cute and vibrant co-op party game is Potion Party, one where you and up to three other players must work together to brew potions as quickly as you can while upgrading the shop and unlocking new items. Love this type of game, so I'm down for this. Shell Shuffle does look like a simple looking tall matching title, and it may just be that, but developer Victorian Clambake did reach out to me, and since their earlier title, the Caribbean sale was pretty good, this is of interest. Add one more action roguelite to the mix with Trial of Destiny, a low poly, fast paced entry that did not have as much flair as Viking Vengeance covered earlier, but nonetheless seems promising. There are some deck building elements in this which grants elemental powers, but as a fan of this genre, I'm down to check it out. One of the more ingenious releases of the week is Unbeatable White Label, the free demo of a rhythm game that will be having its Kickstarter campaign this week. And the best part is that this will be constantly updated throughout the campaign and thus have one of the sweetest art styles out there. Not too far away, in the land of Astoria, there lived a young girl named Robin. She was kind and loved taking care of the world around her. But inside, she was still curious about the world that lay beyond. Suddenly, a terrifying noise echoed from beyond the village gate. Robin was surrounded by smoke and cinders. She needed to keep everyone safe. I can't let it get away. 
We kick off the top 5 with Lost Words Beyond the Page, a narrative platformer title where you run on words and use these to interact with the world around you. There have been a number of such meta-narrative titles, but this game in particular does look to do it well, so it's certainly one of interest. Her hope was shattered. Why is this happening? It isn't fair! I felt so confused. A cold determination gripped her. She was ready. Alright, so Cozy Grove technically launched on Apple Arcade in March, but releases on PC and consoles this week, and is a charming little title where you play as a spirit sculpt having to wander a haunted island, helping the spirits around, and to restore life and colour to the land. This made my best upcoming Cozy Life Sim video, so I do have to give this another shout out, where everything in this is just so adorable. Do bear in mind that you are meant to play a little bit of this every day instead of a whole bunch in one sitting, using the real-time clock like Animal Crossing, but it does seem so charming and should be wonderful. A title that made my most anticipated indie games of the month makes it to launch with the hotly anticipated The Slawmancer, a Diablo-style action RPG which may just be a little tighter in design. Yes, there are only 3 character classes, but the powers and abilities seem fun, it does have the requisite tons of loot, and there does appear to be flexibility in the way a character is built due to the Path of Exile inspired skill tree. Again, as covered in my 5 year anniversary special, I absolutely love Diablo, being a huge part of my gaming history growing up, so I do have very high hopes for this game and it sure looks like fun. Of course, my most anticipated indie game of the month comes in at number 1 with 8 Doors Arum's Afterlife Adventure, a stylish hand-drawn metroidvania entry that is sorely needed in a year lacking in those. It has you delving into the afterlife, searching for your father's soul, but the uniquely Korean influence of the design and enemies are a nice change of pace.
Well, the color scheme chosen doesn't immediately pop since it's a lot of browns and greys. As a fan of this genre, I cannot say no. According to the store page, there are 8 different areas, 21 deadly bosses and 7 types of weapons, so it should be quite the hefty experience, and hopefully it controls smoothly enough, but high hopes for this nonetheless, taking the number 1 spot. To see more of the big picture, check out these awesome videos and I will see you after the jump.